Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about reverb subjectivity. It varies a lot between usages, so let's just walk through some of the thinking behind it and, and we can uh, get a better understanding. What is reverb? It's how long the sound stays around after it is sung, played, or spoken within a room. We can have reverberation with music, we can have reverberation with voice. So it's just how long it stays around in the room. A lot of people call it echo. It's not echo because echo is a repeating signal, you know, usually over some distance, but a repeating signal nonetheless. We don't have that re with reverb. Reverb is the summation of all the reflections off the surfaces of the room. How do we measure it? RT30, 60 decay rate, 30 dB, 60 dB, how much it decays, over, you know, down 30 dB and how 60 dB, how long it takes for these two numbers to be hit. This is a, a kind of a new one in the last five years people look at. So what we do is we measure how long the sound stays around in the room. Now, why do we do that? Because it has an impact on speech intelligibility, SI, and I'm going to call it music intelligibility. It's not a real index, but I want you to kind of get a feel and an idea for what we're doing here. We have a certain speech intelligibility index achieved in this room here where I'm doing videos. If we played music in the room, it would be completely different. Now, we don't have a separate index for music, but we do for voice, okay? So basically, what we want to do is find the range where sound stays around and gives us the intelligibility at the same time. So we want to factor all of these things in. Reverb prolongs the natural harmonic decay of our notes and of our ability to hear the fundamental and the harmonic. And then we have certain modes which can exaggerate and attenuate the situation too. So all this has to be consider considered in it. We have to look at the tail. If we hold that tail too long, stays around in the room too long, that's distortion. And that has a big impact on resolution, okay? So reverb and resolution go kind of hand in hand, right? So let's look at this graphic here. You can see studio 0.3 to 0.7 seconds. That's a range, okay? What does that tell you? Well, it's a range, so it tells you it's subjective, okay? You might prefer this. You might prefer 0.4. You might prefer 0.5. Just depends on your usage. This is where the terms dry, wet, you know, dead, live come from. It's a measure, subjective measure of reverberation time. So the goal is to get them down uh, into a range that you can work with and then you tune over time, right? So we design our studios in the one second range and then we tune them to the individual person's needs and usages. Try to dial in a reverberation time window for someone without knowing what they're about or anything like that. You have to give people a range and then the option to improve within that range. Okay, like I said, we're working in ranges. So you can see all the different subjective ranges here listed in that graphic. So we have to keep in mind the music that we're working with, the processing that we're working with, and all of these things that we're working with in the room. You might have working in a music genre that likes a lot of reverb, okay? Likes a lot of delay, likes a lot of processing. So you may not want that much processing in your room. You may want a room that's too dead or a little bit, I'm sorry, not too dead, but a little bit lower in the range scale because you're already adding that in and you want to make sure you hear everything. So reverb is subjective. The goal when we do our designs is to get within a range and then over time tune. That's the only way to dial the room in because you're never going to get it 100% right out of the gate, but you can get a range and then you can work down from it. We always look at the higher end of the range and work our way down, leaving space available for treatment. The subjectivity of reverb. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. 
We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.